<laughs> When I grow up, I want to be the president. This is the dream of many kids around the world. However, the path towards achieving this dream can be vastly different from country to country. Anyone born on American soil, have lived in the states for more than 14 years, and are now over 35 years old, then you can run for U.S. president. Sounds easy, but pulling it off is a super complex business. You need to first set up a team and choose your running mate, then deliver speeches, fight through debates, and raise funds wherever you can, and beat all your opponents to finally sit in the Oval Office. The whole deal lasts for over one year. Without a glib tongue, extraordinary stamina, and most importantly, an unending flow of greenbacks, no one can ever pull through it. The two candidates in the 2012 U.S. presidential election spent 2.04 billion U.S. dollars. Alas, becoming a political hero is definitely far more difficult than becoming an American Idol. Want to become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? Well, first you need to go through trials and tribulations to take leadership of your party, and then double your efforts for a majority in the House of Commons. Prime ministership is yours. That chance is way narrower than what Susan Boyle had at winning Britain's Got Talent. How then does one win the presidency in China? To begin with, you also must get to the top of the governing party. But here we're talking about a party of more than 85 million members. To qualify for top leadership, you need to go through decades of selections and tests. The membership of the gigantic party is a first pass. You could be a college student, or a factory hand, or a technician, a journalist, a teacher. Anyways, you must be excellent at what you do. Various trials and tests lie ahead to determine whether you have it in you to lead. In China, officials are ranked in a hierarchy. Typically, one starts at the primary level and then is promoted successively to township section, county division, department bureau, and province ministry levels. Among China's seven million officials, only one out of every 140,000 makes this far, and it takes more than 20 years. Take Xi Jinping, president of China. He started at a primary level office. One similar to community councils in the West. Later, he was promoted to run a county, then a city, and then different provinces like Fujian and Zhejiang and Shanghai. He went on to become the VIP and finally the Party General Secretary and the President. He experienced 16 major job transfers and governed an accumulative population of over 150 million over 40 plus years. The other six members of China's new top leadership team, the Politburo Standing Committee, elected by the CPC Congress in 2012, have traveled a similar journey, one step at a time. All the places where the seven members have served add up to half of China's territory, including major municipalities and provinces with population, GDP, and comprehensive development level of a mid-sized country. In this system, before a party member could take over the helm of China, he would have sailed through all kinds of rapids and shoals. More important, he would have participated in the deliberation and formulation of many major strategies and policies. That is why, over the decades, through several leadership transitions, China has managed to keep its policies generally consistent and worked along one national development strategy. This is one of the secrets of the China miracle. To counter problems like environmental degradation and statistical frauds in recent years due to excessive pursuit of GDP, the evaluation criteria for officials have also been duly modified to include items such as energy and resource efficiency, social security, and cultural development. To the end of each year, officials face a thorough performance review where they are gauged with more than 40 different yardsticks. Besides, their performance is also subject to a vote of approval by the rank and file under their administration, and all kinds of supervision. Today, the 538 million netizens of China show no mercy to officials with misconducts. Many roads lead to national leadership, and every country has one for itself. 
whether by a single ballot that gets the whole nation out to vote or by a meritocratic screening that requires years of hard work like the making of a kung fu master. As long as the people are satisfied and the country develops and progresses as a result, it's working.